Hi, this is Tim Vagan, and welcome to my biomechanical analysis for HM503. What we're going to be doing is looking at injury prevention during the gymnastics dismount salute to, in particular, the pars articularis joint of the lumbar spine. What we're going to be doing is taking a look at proper mechanical alignment, muscles used, and some of the stresses on the joint. The first priority of a particularly good aligned spine doesn't really work very well in gymnastics, especially at the finish. It is a subjective score, so we want to be really careful that the gymnast still looks aesthetically pleasing before we go ahead and make sure that they're aligned properly and decrease the stresses on the joint. In this analysis, we're going to look at the components of the dismount salute and also what we can do and give you some exercises that we can work on to prevent injury and increase flexibility and proper mobility. We're also going to look at a bit of an interregional dependence model of looking at the thoracic spine, the hip flexors, and all of the above that make sure that the body works correctly to decrease the pressures on the spine. What we're looking at here is my subject. Her name is Grace and she is a Kentwood High School gymnast who is gladly helping me out just actually by stepping out in the yard and just showing primarily the salute. The salute will come from a variety of apparatus and this just happens to be from tumbling in the yard but it can also happen on the beam it can happen on the floor exercises which is going to increase much more landing forces but the key thing is it's going into moving right along into the hyperextension of that lower spine so what i'd like to do now is go ahead and take you right into the powerpoint presentation of this mechanical analysis so sit back enjoy and hopefully we'll get some really good discussions and questions regarding the gymnastics salute. Move on right into the biomechanical analysis. Here is Grace doing a cartwheel in the yard and as you can see she comes right into that salute position. So we're going to take a look and see what happens to the body during that salute position. So as you can watch as she comes into it, the ankle is dorsiflexin the knees are staying fairly stable. Her single hip is extending to neutral while the hips are externally rotating to screw home as her legs come together. Her opposite hip is holding steady and the pelvis is moving into a slight anterior tilt which in case turns the lumbar spine into hyperextension. Her thoracic spine is extending and as the thoracic spine extends the ribs rotate anteriorly. As the ribs rotate anteriorly, the scapula are able to retract as the shoulder comes up into extension and it's also externally rotating. And you can see that her neck is actually neutral. We add a little bit of that thoracic spine stretch toward the end to go back into her normal postures. When we look at the muscular analysis, the contractions that are concentric in this motion are in the ankle complex, the anterior tibialis, and a variety of other anterior ankle muscles. The hip extensors on the active hip, the ones that are moving, they are concentrically contracting. Her lumbar extensors are contracting, scapular retractors, shoulder extensors, and shoulder external rotators are all contracting concentrically. The eccentric contractions are the ankle dorsiflexors, the hip flexors, the anterior abdominals, the multifidi in the spine, the posterior intercostals to prevent from excessive rib rotation, and the shoulder extensors and external rotators. There are isometric contraptions going on. The quadriceps and distal hamstrings are holding the knee steady. The spinal rotators are holding the spine in position and then the cervical musculature is also holding the spine in position as well. 
When we think about how the body is working together, we're going to look at something that came from Gray Cook and Mike Boyle called the joint by joint approach. And what that basically talks about is the body is stacked up of a series of mobile segments and stable segments starting down from the foot. The foot should be stable and stability is of course the definition of that is to keep the joints under control under the presence of an external force. Then the ankles should be mobile and the definition of mobility is the passive ability for a joint to move. Then you move on up the chain, the knee should be stable, the hip joint should be mobile, the lumbar spine should be stable, the thoracic spine should be mobile, the scapula the scapular thoracic joint should be stable and the glenar humeral joint should be mobile. And this really falls into what we call the interregional dependence model in the fact that if one area is tighter or not stable or not mobile, the other areas above and below it are going to take the issue that that joint's not having. So if the hips are not very mobile. Then the lumbar spine, which is above it, is going to take that extra mobility from the hips and try to move where it's going to be a little too much motion and can cause injuries to that lumbar spine. So when we think about the forces that are happening on the lumbar spine, we see gravity, of course, is causing the compression forces to come down. That hyperextension, if you look at the slide on the right, the picture on the right, can push forward with that spondylolysis defect as, as it goes through. The vertebra will slide forward on each other and that's actually where the pars joint is, is right in there and that separation of the pars joint is going to cause that spondylolysis. Sometimes a lack of hip and T-spine mobility. If we take a look here at one of our models, Grace, and you look at a very tight T-spine and an extra hyperextension right at that arrow, and then my daughter, Emma, has a little better hyperextension or mobility in the thoracic spine, and therefore she is not extending quite as much right at that thoracolumbar junction. So we're not putting forces on that pars joint. There's also a lot of anterior shear forces that are happening right at the pars joint itself. And then the other forces from an external side of things is the absorption of the forces on the surface. Some of the corrections that we may want to do is try to work on mobility of the anterior hips and increase T-spine mobility. You can see some of these slides here where you're increasing both the anterior hip, getting the hip flexors, as well as T-spine rotation. And then here on the bottom slide is holding the lumbar spine still and actively moving the arm back and forth to help both extension and rotation of the thoracic spine. It's also going to be very important that we strengthen and activate the multifidi. And here's a picture of a variety of core stabilizing exercises because we have to do remember that going back to the forces when we get this anterior force that shearing and the hip flexors are pulling hard on that. It's the objective of the multifidus to pull back on that and hold those joints stable. If you have lack of strength in the multifidus and lack of stability, then you're going to get more forces pulling anteriorly, which is going to put stress on that pars joint itself. So there we have it, the biomechanical analysis of the gymnastics dismount salute. I really appreciate you taking your time to look at this. I look forward to some great feedback to find out how we should look at this a little bit more in general. The gymnasts that we see here in the Pacific Northwest are uh, very common that we see these injuries to the pars joints, whether they just be stress-related 
incidences or stress reactions all the way on to full bone spondies. A lot of times we treat them with bracing and extensive physical therapy going after exactly what I outlined in here, hip flexor length and a lot of multifidus strengthening and trying to restore that joint by joint mobility stability continuum throughout the body. So as you can see on the slide, here is a series of reference materials that I used for this presentation and I appreciate and look forward to the feedback. Thanks and let's finish out this 503 class strong just like it started. What a great class.